Hey, everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. And uh, we're almost finished, so this is very good. Um, remember that we need to move on with the platform. That is very important. So you finish uh, the platform for this incoming weekend. So on Saturday and Sunday, we can finish everything. And also remember, we are going to do the the uh, Insa Forbes survey this incoming Monday. That is the our last day of class. So, um, if you have questions, of course you can check it out with me. All right. So we are going to check the attendance and let's see how it goes. Let's see. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I'm here, teacher. Okay. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Y Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present, teacher, present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonia. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto mm -hmm. Carlos Avilés Rivera. Mm -hmm. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Present teacher. Very good. Perfect. So let's start with the class. Let's see how it goes. So, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So, adverbs. Interesting. So it's a little bit of grammar. What is an adverb? Let's see. Uh, Oscar René, could you please help me reading the concept? Yes. Okay. What is an arbet? An arbet is a word that describe, describes 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 a verb, just like a adjectives. A verbs are used. To add to L detail detail to a sentence. More speci specifically, 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 specifically adverbs. Tell us how how when or when where sometimes happen it. Okay, thank you very much. So what is an adverb? It's very similar to an adjective. Similar, but not the same, okay? So it says an adverb is a word that describes a verb. So that is very important. So an adverb, uh, remember that the adjective, the adjective describes a noun. So when you say, for example, my mom is beautiful, the chair is big. So big, it describes the chair, which is an, a noun. But the adverb describes a verb, okay? So when you say, I drive fast. So fast is describing how you drive the action. So, so that is the main difference. And it says, just like adjectives, adverbs are used to add detail to a sentence. More specifically, adverbs tell us how, when, where something happened. So these are the three important things of uh, Describes how something happened or when something happened, or where something happened. So that is uh, an adverb. Do you have any questions on this? 
is general um, use and uh, action teacher. Is general use with the verb, yes, with the action. Okay. Good. So, this is an example, and uh, let's see. Uh, Roberto Carlos, could you please help me with this? Good evening, sorry, don't hear Say. Ah, okay, so, but are you able to read? Okay. Let me... The man is part of the price. In the example above, the word deeply describe how how he was starring. So deeply is an adverb. His sentence, it means he was starring in a deep way. If his starring has been weird, we could have as we could have said, he was starting wearily. It's very good. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So it, this is an example that says the man stared deeply into her eyes. So the first question I have for you is what is start? Steered. Actually, the transition steer. What is steered? Anybody knows? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, steer es como mirar fijamente. So when I say, for example, uh, are you staring at the cake? So it's like you are looking at the cake with detail, something like that. So I, and, think, I think so that in the comenzar, the comenzado. Uh, ese, lleva, ese lleva T, start. Ah, uh, okay. So that it's confuser, is teacher. It's confuser. One little letter is different. So, but if we practice, we can do that. So, okay. All but right. Deeply is a uh, profundo, profundidad is relation. Ah, okay. This is very interesting because deep is profundo, profundidad. Deeply is profundamente. Porque es un adverb. So, if it's an adverb, most of the adverbs, not all the adverbs, but many adverbs are L Y at the end. So deeply, uh, I don't know, quickly, uh, all those are adverbs. And uh, what is important here is that deeply is describing the verb, and the verb is steer. The man stared deeply into her eyes. So that is giving detail about what the action was done. So, and there is the explanation. In the example above, the word deeply describes how he was staring. So deeply is an adverb. In this sentence, it means he was staring in a deep way. If his staring had been weird, we could have said, we was staring weird. So, si le cambiamos ya el adverbio, ya cambia todo. So, that is very important because gives details about that. Uh, do you have any questions on this slide? Weirdly. Weirdly is a traduction in my in intelligent artificial is uh, extrañamente. Very good. Rar, raramente. So it's not the same to say the man's tear deeply that the man stare weirdly. Okay, so the advert gives you, gives the sense of the sentence here. So if you change the advert, the meaning is, is different, right? Okay, any other question here? Okay. So using adjectives and adverbs, uh, let's see. Ana Hernandez, could you please help me with this? Using adjectives and adverbs. 
You know, adjectives and adverbs are both uh, words that describe something. But for many people, these words are also easy to mix up. Thankfully, uh, there are some simple rules that will help you know which in which is which and where to use them. Look at the context. If you're not sure whether to use an verb or an adjective, try to figure out what you're describing. Remember, adjectives are used to describe nouns, which mean they can explain what kind of, of thing you have, how many things you have, or which thing you're talking about. Adverbs, on the other hand, are used to describe verbs, which means they can explain how something happened. When something happened or where something happened. Very good, but sometimes that happens. Sometimes uh, we are confused about adjectives and adverbs, but they are both for describing, but different things. They describe different things. So it says, you know, adjectives and adverbs are both words that describe something. So adjectives and adverbs is for description, okay? But for many people, these words are also easy to mix up. Uh, what is mix up? Anybody knows? Mezclar, something like that. Very good, mezclar. So thankfully, a ese es un adverbio, porque lleva el Y at the end. Casi todas las palabras que llevan el Y at the end, uh, they are, at, not todas, but a lot. Okay, so thankfully, there are some simple rules that will help you know which is which and when to use them. So if you follow these rules, you will understand when to use adjectives and when to use adverbs. So it says, look at the context. If you're not sure whether to use an adverb or an adjective, try to figure out what you're describing. What is figure out? Decifrar. Decifrar, very good. So remember, adjectives are used to describe nouns. So this is very important. Nouns. Adjectives describe nouns, which means uh, they can explain what kind of thing you have, how many things you have, or which thing you're talking about. So nouns. The adjective describe now. For example, when I say uh, that is a beautiful car. So beautiful is an adjective because it's describing the noun. If I say uh, uh, this is a nice class. So nice is an adjective because it's describing class and class is a noun. So that is very important. Adverse, on the other hand, are used to describe verbs, which means they can explain how something happened, when something happened, or where something happened. So when we say, um, I ride my bike fast. In this case, fast is describing ride. And that is an adverb. If I say, uh, she eats slow, slowly. So slowly is going to be an adverb because it's describing it, not she. Okay, so that is the main difference between adjectives and adverbs. Do you have any question on this? Okay. Look at the ending. Uh, this is another tip, definitely. Uh, Blanca, could you please help me reading this slide? Yes. Look at the ending. You mind how already not noticed 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 that many adverbs and with the letters like if you see a word that ends in like there is 
a good change, it's an adverb, not an adjective. Can you use the rule to tell what's wrong with this sentence? Okay, so this is uh, something that I was explaining before, right? If you see a word that ends in L-Y, probably, very likely, uh, that is going to be an adverb. So when you say slowly, that is an adverb. Slow is an adjective. If I say beautiful, it's an adjective. If I say beautifully, that is an adverb. If I say intelligent, that is an adjective. Intangibly, that is an adverb. Okay, so um, the most of the words that end in L-Y, uh, they are adverbs. Not all of them, but many of them. And it says, can you use this rule to tell what's wrong with the sentence? Okay, so what is wrong with the sentence there? If you see only the sentence, he drove quick. So the explanation is below. Let's see who's going to read that one. Uh, Monica, will you please help me read in this slide? Not possible. What about Maria Julia? He drove quick because because it doesn't have a a, a lie ending. You you might you make. You oh might God. you might have guessed that quick is an adjective. However, these sentences in incorrect because an adjective can be used to describe a verb draw. To make this sentence correct, we could we could change the adjective to an ad Adverb, he, he drove quickly. Now the sentences describe how he was driving. Okay, so this is not correct. So we don't say we drove or he drove quick. We say he drove quickly. Because it quick is going to be an adjective. And quickly is an adverb. So since quick or quickly in this case is describing drive or drop in this case, uh, it has to be an adverb, not an adjective. And that is the explanation that says here, because it doesn't have an L-Y ending. You might have guessed. What is guess? Do you remember? What is guess? Anybody knows? I guess we say. Suponer. Suponer. Very good. You might have guessed that quick is an adjective. However, this sentence is incorrect because an adjective can't be used to describe a verb. Drop in this case. To make the sentence correct, we could change the adjective to an adverb. He drove quickly. Now, the sentence describes how he was right. So if you see, it's very important to understand the difference between uh, adjective and adverb. Because depending on what you are describing, you are going to use either one or the other. Do you have any questions here in this slide? No, for me, teacher, it's clear. Good, perfect. Okay, and says, look, at the placement. This is another thing that is very important. Let's see. Sylvia, Patricia, could you please help me reading this slide? Not possible. What about Mauricio Rivera? Not possible either. What about Aida Lopez? 
Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Look at the placement. There's an easy way to know where to put an RGB. <clears throat> I'm sorry. An RGB mm -hmm. in a sentence. It will usually appear just before the noun. It's describing by concept. An author will use it usually appear right after the verb. It's <clears throat> describing. And the verse as well? Uh, yes, please. Green adjective and revenuously is the adverb. I like green the sword the mask. I always eat rain rain ah no, how to say that? Revenous. Revenous. Very good. Perfect. Okay, so let's check it out. Um it says look at the placement. What is placement? Es, eh, disponer. Uh, it could be something like that. In this case, it's el lugar, el lugar del adverbio. Donde va. So look at the placement of the ad. Okay. And uh, it says, here's an easy way to know where to put an adjective in a sentence. So uh, what it's saying here is that it's very, very important to to put the, the correct word in the order. Uh, if you are going to use an adjective or an adverb, it's going to be very important where you are going to position that in the sentence. Okay, so it will, the adverb, it will usually appear just before the noun is describing. Uh, that is the adjective, sorry. Uh, by contrast, an adverb will usually appear right after the verb is described. So the position is very important. The adjective is going to be before the noun is described. So first is the adjective and then is the noun. But the other will appear after the verb is described. So we have a sentence here with both an adjective and an adverb. For example, I like green shops the most. I always eat rabbits. So look at that. Green is an adjective and is before shops. That is the noun that the adjective is described. So question, what is shops? Arbustos. Arbustos, very good. And the other sentence says, I always eat ravenously. What is ravenously? Vengativamente. Mm, not in this Vengativa. case. It's, it's going to be vorazmente. That would be. Okay. Okay. So look at the sentence. We have the two examples here. Green, all the colors are adjectives. Okay. So when you are going to use an adjective, it's going to be before the noun is described. And when you are going to use an adverb, it's going to be after the verb is describing. So green shrubs before the adjective, eat ravenously. So ravenous is going to be after the verb is described. That is a very important part. Okay, uh, do you have any questions here? For me, no teacher is clear. Good, that is nice. Yes, okay, let's check some other pieces of information about this. Uh, let's see who's going to be this part. Uh, uh, Juan, could you please help me reading this one? Okay, unfortunately, placement doesn't always tell you if something is an adverb or adjective. For example, is sassy an adjective or adverb in the image below? Mm -hmm. Even though it, it is right next to a verb, is 
sassy is an adjective because it describes the, ma the magician. And while adjectives are usually close to the words they describe, ad adverbs can move around more freely in a sentence. For example, you might see an adverb. Oh, it doesn't look the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, no words. Let me see. Oh, here is it. I, that is it. Okay. An adverb at the beginning of a sentence. Very good. Perfect. So, so the position is important, but it's not always true. So sometimes we need to be careful. For example, it says, unfortunately, placement doesn't always tell you if something is an adverb or an adjective. For example, is sassy an adjective or an adverb in the image below? What is sassy? Do you remember? Atrevido. Atrevido, very good. So, sassy. Um, and it says the sentence, the magician sure is sassy. So, in this case, this is an adjective. Uh, well, well, let's read the one below. Even though, do you remember what is even though? Aunque siempre. Aun aunque. Aun aunque. Yeah. It's right next to a verb. The verb is is, of course. Sassy is an adjective because it describes the magician. So in this case, sassy is after a verb, but it's not describing the verb. It's describing the magician. So that's why uh, is an adjective. And while adjectives are usually close to the words that they describe, adverbs can move around more freely in a sentence. What is freely? Libremente. Libremente, very good. For example, you might see an adverb at the beginning of a sentence. So that is another thing. So yes, the most common, is that the adjective is going to be before uh, the noun that is describing, or that the adverb is going to be after the verb is describing. But sometimes it's not true. So what you need to do in these situations is to check what is the word described. Is describing the verb or is describing the uh, noun? If it's describing the noun, well, it's an adjective. If it's describing the verb, then it's an adjective. So that is the most important rule here. Uh, do you have any questions here? Only don't, don't hear me good. Uh, when you say if the screen describe the, the noun, is it a noun or, or is another word? I mean, when the word describes the noun, then that is a no. negative. But if the word describes the verb then is an adverb. Okay. Good. Let's move to the next one. Common adverbs and adjectives. Nice. So a lot of adjectives and adverbs are actually based on the same word, which is one reason they're sometimes difficult to tell apart. What is tell apart? Do you know what is tell apart? Diferenciar, teacher. Very good. That is it. Tell apart. Here's a list of the adjectives and adverbs you'll see the most. So uh, look at the adverb. Almost all of those, they have a word. I mean, the, the ending is L-Y, right? Let me just look if I can. That's it. Okay. Not all of them are like that, but the most of them, they finish in L-Y. So we have real, and the adverb is really. Uh, late, lately, hard, hardly, bad, badly, most, mostly, easy, easily, quick, quickly, slow, slowly, clear, clearly, 
helpful, hopefully. And the other one is an exception, good and well, right? Good is an adjective and well is an adverb. So when you say, and this is very funny, uh, imagine that somebody says, how are you? And you say, good, that is not correct. You have to say, well. Estoy bien, well. Porque si usted dice, uh, I am good, usted está diciendo, estoy bueno. Posiblemente sea cierto, ¿verdad? pero También. anyways. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the pen, teacher. Sí, yeah. Ahí yeah. significa que, que no está ebrio, teacher, está bueno. <laughs> ah, ok. Uh. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a good answer for that one. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Para que no malinterprete, por favor. Yeah, it might. <laughs> so you can see that the use of the word is very important. I mean, because if you are in a very formal conversation, if you say I'm good, uh, the other people is going to say, okay, that is fine. If you say so, you are good, right? But anyways, <laughs> the answer, the correct answer is well. Okay, okay if you say no have yeah. problem, then yeah. you know you believe it, then that's it, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, your estimate is very good, very high. Definitely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, these words are very, very important. Very important. The way that you use it and the position on the subject. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions here? Not for me, teacher. Okay. Let's check some other things here. Additives that ends in L Y. Let's see. Uh, Ernesto, will you please help me reading this? Yes, teacher. Adjectives that end in M Y. There are some adjectives that 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 do actually end in Y. As you can see the in the examples below. What a lovely sweater. Ha, that's a likely story. He's quite a silly man. That was a lively party. Her mistake proved rather costly. Very good, perfect. Okay. So, these adjectives, not adverbs, these adjectives ends in L-Y. But those are adjectives, not adverbs. So how are you going to know if this is an adverb or an adjective? Again, you just need to check what is described. Is describing the noun or is describing the verb? For example, what a lovely sweater. Okay, lovely is describing sweater. So this is an adjective, right? What is lovely? Do you know what is lovely? Hermoso. Hermoso, very good. So what a lovely story. The other example is, ha, that's a likely story. So likely is describing story. So it's an adjective. What is likely? Likely is algo que gusta bastante. Que es, es una buena historia, sería la traducción. So it's an adjective. He's quite a silly man. So, what is silly? A silly is a uh, bobo. So, silly is describing man. So, definitely that is an adjective. And that was a lively. Uh -huh. Sorry, in this case, uh, silly, uh, the traduction is tonto, tonta. Sí, something like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But when you say dumb or dumber, it's similar. They are equivalent. Okay. It's Good. a different. It's uh, no no have um, the one difference is you say if you use silly or use a uh, dumb. Well, in English, if you use silly, it's more like a man that is not that, it's like innocent. He is not that smart. And when you use dumb, it's somebody that is like, 
it doesn't pay attention. Okay, oh. no, this uh, is the perspective of the expression. Yeah, both are negative uh, adjectives. So, yeah, oh. it's like when, when you say in Spanish, uh, que bruto, que pasmado. So both are very similar, right? Uh, both are negative. Uh, there is not a main difference, but you can use uh, one or the other in different situations. Teacher, uh, what is uh, uh, use lovely and what is use uh, uh, lovely is hermoso, pre beautiful? Okay, the problem is that lovely in Spanish, we don't have a word for that one. So uh, there are many examples on that one that sometimes we don't have a translation into Spanish of some words, some adjectives. So in this case, we use the same, uh, hermoso. Uh, but there are, there are words for that one. Beautiful is also nice. So in this case, we can say what a beautiful sweater, and that will be correct. Okay. Good, good. And the other part says that was a lively party. So lively is describing party. So the question is, what is lively? Okay, so lively is como vivido. Something very, very nice, I don't know. And the other one says her mistake proved rather costly. So in this case, is uh, costly is describing mistake. So that is, okay. Uh, costly is le costo caro, something like that. So remember these uh, adjectives that are adjectives and not other depending on the position. If you see, almost always the position is there, uh, except the last one. And if, for the last one, you need to analyze. Costly is describing what? Proof? No. Mistake? Ah, uh, this is an idea. Okay? So let's check the other part. Uh, is that don't end in L-Y. Um, Ramiro, is it possible for you, you to read that part? Yes, teacher. Adverbs that don't end in a lie. Likewise, there are many adverbs that don't end in a lie, as you can see in this example below. I was very excited to see him. She played well. Come here often. Come him often? Often, yeah. Often, I uh, thank you. I think you acted too fast. Sometimes things just don't work out. Very good, perfect. So these are examples of others that don't end in L-Y. Uh, likewise, what is likewise? Asimismo. Asimismo, de igual manera, something like that. Okay, and uh, it says there are many others that don't end in L-Y, as you can see in the examples below. And then it says, I was very, very, is very common advert that I believe everybody knows. So uh, that one is going to be with different L-Y. So very, here is... Uh, is showing you or is describing the word was, that is the verb. So I was very excited. How were you? Uh, very, very excited. So you look at that one. So the other one says, she played well. Well is another example of that. We don't use that with L-Y. So, and it's describing play, not she. She played well. How did you play? Very well, okay? Come here often. Often is describing come. So it's going to be an adverb. Often is another adverb. 
too is another very common one. So I think you acted too fast. So it's describing active, right? Sometimes things just don't work out. Sometimes it's describing uh, the things that don't work out. What is work out? Do you know? Ejercicio, uh, workout, ese ejercicio en, en, en exteriores, no? Mm, ok, workout sí puede ser ejercitarse. I'm working out, pero también significa funcionar, no función. This is not working out. So when you say, uh, let's work it out, you're saying, vamos a hacer que funcione. Let's make it happen. So that is workout. Ok, so we have. As you can see, different parts of this. Do you have any questions on this? The difference between one and the other? Okay, very good. And let's check this part. Um, it says, you can also place another between the word to and a verb. This is called a split infinitive. In the past, this was considered a serious grammatical error, but it's commonly used and accepted today. For example, today I swear to bravely do what no man has done before, break my entire yard. <laughs> okay, so you can see here that, for example, you see uh, bravely that is separated with to and uh, do. In the past, that was not correct, but now it's possible. That is totally, totally possible, okay? So um, this is about, oops, this is about that, that little thing, right? So it says today I swear, what is swear, do you know? Jurar, I swear to bravely do what no man has done before. Break my entire. Do you know what is break? Okay, break significa barrer, pero con rastrillo, las hojas del jardín. Uh, that's why this is funny. So it's kind of a joke, let's say. Okay, so uh, this is not very common, but it's something that we can use depending on what you want to express. Do you have any questions here? No, teacher, it's clear. Good, so let's practice then about what you have done, uh, what we have learned actually. What we're going to do is uh, I, you, I want you to write four sentences, two with adjectives, and do with adverbs and send them to the chat so we can check on that one, okay? I will be checking here the chat. You okay, me, teacher, uh, may uh, uh, say a call, uh, again, uh, I can hear you, excuse me. Uh, yes, uh, what you're gonna do right now is to write two sentences with adjectives and two sentences with adverbs and send them on the chat. Uh, hello. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to finish the activity. I will be checking the chat.
Very good. We have the first one. So the only thing is that uh, in the last one it says, my brother walks, walks slowly. And that will be. Good. Race cars drive quickly. Nice. And good. Slow eight. On the second one, Ramiro has to be Oliver eight slowly. Only the positions. Uh, she's supposed... Eight slowly. Ah, al, al revés, entonces. Uh -huh. uh, did he change the 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 word? Uh, the correct uh, uh, Oliver eight slowly. Exactly. Thank you. Good. Yeah, the other are good. Very good, perfect. Let's see the rest of the class. Thank you. Okay, I don't know if the other people are going to send the examples. I'm still waiting, but anyways, we can just switch by now. And we're going to go to the book. Okay, here's the book. And we're going to continue as we usually do. So, inventory is the name of the unit. And it says, I will be able to design a basic plan to organize an inventory management system. And in the number one, the question says, how do I calculate the right amount of inventory to stock? Ah, that is a very good question. What do you believe? How can you calculate the right amount of inventory to stock? What do I, you I, think? 
I think is is depend the the quantity the the deliveries is necessary uh, sending uh, per per day per week and uh, per monthly. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that is a very good method that you are going to be able to to identify uh, the forecast on what you are going to sell, right, and then check it out. Good, good. Teacher, How, uh -huh. teacher Ramiro uh, uh, is uh, is uh, it's a good a good point. In, in the other in the other hand, uh, how I I calculate the, the right amount of inventory to stock. Um, I think in the last in the last class, uh, I remember uh, the is depend of the product, but it's important to determine uh, the methodology. For example, met, uh, method ABC, method uh, FIPO is the other is the other method that for me is very important. Uh, depend the product, uh, calculate the right amount uh, of the inventory to stock in a specific product. Perfect. Definitely, that that will be the the best, right? So you calculate. Uh, yes, there are many things that you are going to consider to determine the best system, right? So because yes, you have to calculate the costs. You have to calculate uh, the price. Do you remember the price on on inventory, for example, for Black Black Friday, Christmas, or things like that? Uh, also the pricing, also the conditions. On the warehouse for you to keep all those things and depending on many things yes then you have to take one system it could be the abc the fifo the lifo um any of the methods that we had checked already good that is very good nice so we have a conversation here it says read the conversation and take turns practicing it as usual what i'm going to do is i'm going to tell you the conversation so you check the pronunciation then we practice and then we are going to check the vocabulary so it says i'm having a bad time with my business susan i need some advice about inventory management okay i see you keep notes on any scrap of paper for you the first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the packages. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spots so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Do you have any pronunciation question? All right, so let's practice. Let's see how it goes. Ah, go ahead. In the in the first paragraph that that uh, talk, uh, Susan, uh, for example, in the last in the last line, uh, for example, I recommend uh, you do this in a, a, spre a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet, huh? A spreadsheet. What's Spread the name? Uh, a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet. It's like Excel. Cancel. Excel. Okay. The software. Something like okay. that. That is special. Good. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. All right. So let's practice. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we're going to check first with Ramiro and Ernesto. Let's see how it goes. Yes, Ernesto. Uh, I am George. You agree? Sure. Go Thank ahead. you, Ernesto. I am Hey. I am having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. 
Okay, I see you. Keep note on any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized, organized, organized. organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I did I didn't really give much at attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the package. By labeling labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your product gets stored accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Thank Very you. good. Nice. So now uh, we're going to listen to Maria Julia and uh, Jose Fredo is not possible. And Veronica. Okay. I'm star, Peru. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I'm having a bad time with my, my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory man management. Okay. I see you keep not on any scrap of paper, yours. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting, getting all, of, all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in spreadsheet and record not there consistently. Sure. I can that I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the package. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your products get stored accurately is the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when you need. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. So now we're gonna to listen to Oscar Rene and Juan Roberto. Okay, I start. Okay. Okay, I'm having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some other side about advice. inventory advice advice about about inventory management okay i see you keep notes on on any scrap of paper jorge the first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place i recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do. I can do that. I did really give much attention to my notes. Now you know. And look here, the labels are falling off the packages. By labeling inventory properly, you ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spot, so that. Two employees can find them easily when needed. Very good, nice. Uh, let's check. Mauricio Rivera, is it possible for you? I guess not. So, Jonathan Ariel, is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Monica Avalos, is it possible for you? Okay, uh, Blanca. Yes. Okay, and Possible. Silvia Patricia. Yes. Okay. Okay. I have. 
Okay, I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper for him. The first step to implement an organized organized inventory management system is getting all of you broke in vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. No, no, you know. And look here, the labels are per filing of the package by labeling inventory properly. You ensure that your product get started accurately in the right spots so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Very good, perfect, nice. Now let's check. Ana Hernandez, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, and Aida Lopez. Uh, okay. 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 I am Jorge. I am having a bad time in my business. Susan, I need some advice about inventory management. Okay, I see you keep notes on any scrap of paper. George, the first step to implement an unorganized inventory. Oh, oh I see. Organize inventory ma management system. It's getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend I recommend you this in a spreadsheet and record notes there consistently. Sure. I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look there. The levels are falling off the package. By leveling inventory properly, you ensure that your product gets stored accurately in the right spot so that your employees can find them easily when needed. Very good, perfect, thank you. So let's check some pronunciation words. Uh, remember here is advice, uh, management, advice. management, scrap, and let's see, spreadsheet. Mm. Packages. Because that is a plural one, so it's packages. And easily. Okay, so let's take some vocabulary. Uh, what is advice? Consejo. Consejo, Consejo, very good. What is scrap of paper? Catarra. Es un pedazo de papel. So, any, any paper. And let's see. Uh, what is spreadsheet? Is the question? Hoja de cálculo. Very good. That is it. Let's see. Labels. Etiquetas. Etiquetas. Good. Uh, falling off. The se caen, se están cayendo. Very good. Uh, packages, paquetes, paquetes, paquetes. Nice. Um, accurately, adecuadamente, 
adecuadamente. Okay. Adecuadamente, correctamente. Good. Spots. El lugar. Lugar. Very good. There's a spot. And that is it. Do you have any questions here? Not for me, teacher. Perfect. So now uh, we're going to answer these questions about the conversation. I will give you a few minutes for you to check into that one, okay? Okay. Okay, so the question number one says, what are some of Jorge's bad practices in inventory management? Aha. Uh -huh. He keep notes on any scrap of paper? Exactly. So he keeps notes on any scrap of paper. So that is not good, right? And uh, number two says, what are Susan's recommendations to solve some of the issues? Work, do we do the uh, do it in uh, a spreadsheet, uh, the the products? Uh... Very good. So a spreadsheet is a very good way for him to. Uh, check the management system, right? And it says, what is another suggestion you could give Jorge to get his inventory organized? Ah, uh, this is interesting. So what would be a recommendation on your side? Me, teacher, uh, uh, the those actions, for example, a spreadsheet and the record note, uh, those actions, do them weekly. Very good to do that weekly. 
that would be a very nice part of the system. Nice, very good. So let's move on to the uh, grammar part. That is exactly what we were checking for. Adverse to qualify verbs. Uh, Blanca, could you please help me reading the chart? Uh-huh. Uh, the paragraph is... Uh, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, all of it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Look at the examples in the box. Then complete the exercise below. Use adverbs to communicate when, where, when, why, how, how often, how much, or to what degree. They quali qualify the, the action qualify. and action and the claims we make. Organize your inventory efficiently. Record inform information accurately. Check for possible improvement consistently. Revise processes slowly. Communicate with your distributor regularly. Change your inventory. Practices incrementally. Many adverbs are created by the putting together an adjective and adding the suffix, suffix like, efficient, but like, uh, equal, equal efficiently, accurate, that like. Uh, accurately con consist that uh, like uh, equal consistently. Thank you. Very good. Perfect. So, yeah, so as we were checking before, we are going to use adverbs to communicate where, when, why, how, how often, how much, and to what degree. So, do you know what is to what degree? In que grado? A que grado se hace algo. Very good. So they qualify the actions. So they qualify the verbs. And the claims we make. And there are some examples, right? Organize your inventory efficiently. Record information accurately. Check for possible improvement consistently. Revise process slowly. Communicate with your distributor regularly. Change your inventory practices incrementally. And it says, uh, many adverbs are created by putting together the adjective and adding the suffix ly. For example, efficient plus ly, efficiently. Mm -hmm. Accurate plus ly, accurately. Consistent plus ly, consistently. So yeah, you can transform an adjective into an adverb just by adding ly. Uh, do you have any questions here? For me, not teacher. Good. All right. So let's go to the exercise number five. So we're going to label the descriptions with the names and the steps to organize an inventory management system. So I will give you a few minutes for you to check into that one.
Okay, so let's check together. The first one, it says, uh, do you want to record what product was sold, what the product listed price is, discounts, and what price was actually paid for the product? What do you think? Uh -huh. Record yourself. Your yeah. Record I agree. I Which agree one? With, with Veronica and Roberto. Record yourselves. Yes. Okay, nice. We agree. That is very good. Number two, it says, get all of your product and vendor information organized and in one place. Product information, description, and shipping info include as well the business name and business contact. Organized product and vendor information. Okay, organized products and vendor information. I agree too with Veronica. Very good, perfect. Okay, number three says, do this to your inventory and it will ensure customers and cashiers are not confused about a product's price. Check and label inventory. Tag and label inventory. Everybody agrees? I agree with Veronica. Good, amazing. Number four, it says, if there is a difference between the order you submitted and the actual inventory delivered, grab a copy of your purchase order to check and catalog all new inventory before it is put away in the stock room. Create and submit accurate purchase orders. Create and submit accurate purchase order. Everybody agrees? I agree, teacher. Very good. And then the next one says, incorporate a purchase order system to make purchases accurate and avoid confusions. And the last one is... Uh -huh. Receive inventory with speed and accuracy. Accuracy. Okay, receive inventory with speed and accuracy. Everybody agrees? Five to five, teacher. Very and, good, perfect. Uh -huh. And the winner is? Yeah. Veronica. So, everybody. <laughs> everybody. Good. Yeah, very good. Now, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult, this one, because we need to understand a lot of things, but you have done a very good job. Okay, so this is a very interesting exercise, but I believe that we're going to do this tomorrow, not today. So excuse, let's go. Excuse me, teacher. Huh? Uh, I have a question for the uh, the platform. Uh -huh. It did, did, did not step, but I I need a, a, have a question for you. Uh -huh. In the platform, a, in the homework number 3.9, I have a, a, a problem. Only a, is, is possibly do it 15 to the 20 points. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, it changed the, 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 the class, but uh, it's the only exercise for finish. Okay, let me check that. Yeah, you are right. Uh, there is an error here. Let me see. Yes, and the number three and four is a, is a joint. It's necessary separately. separately. It's, it's, it's correct. Yeah, that is true. The three and four are together. So uh, there are two questions in one, and that is the real, the real problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Excuse me, if you my interrupt. Oh, no, that is fine. If you have any questions, let me know, okay? So Thank you. Uh, I'm going to report that one. I don't know when it's going to Mati be... When it's going to be fixed. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to report that one and check what happens. So... On that exercise, uh, don't worry. Just do what you need to do and get the 15 points by now, okay? All right. Let me check if we Excuse can Excuse me. It. Yeah, no worries.
Yeah, I guess we can do the exercise, but we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to do it individually because if we do it with a group, probably it's not going to be good. Uh, so this is the exercise that we're going to think of. It, it says in pairs, but we're going to use the steps above as a guide and design a pass, a basic plan to organize an effective inventory management system. So let's speak about that one. What do you believe is an effective inventory uh, management system? What will be the uh, the steps on that? One? What would you do to to create a very effective inventory management? For example, in mind that we're going to speak about uh, which product, a restaurant, which is very complicated. What will be the best? inventory management system what steps would you do if you have to create or or, or have inventory very accurate very nice for a restaurant and the restaurant they sell many things they sell hamburgers meat uh hot dogs whatever you mentioned so what would be a very good method for this kind of situation what do you think In the for the counter is a, a system that name is PEPS P E P S P E P S okay. FIFO first is the FIFO yeah first in size uh, okay first in size uh, first in exit and uh, the product for uh, okay. is a product that the life is short. And this case is the better system for organize the, the or for the manage inventory, um, but uh, with the with the food. For me, this is a, a system um, many functional in the case. Okay. Yeah, in, in the in the in the same line with the. Uh, Roberto mentioned that theory said that if you uh, need inventory food, the, the best method is the FIFO. Very good. So that is a very, very, very nice first step to identify what will be the best method, right? So, and since they are perishable uh, products, Definitely, the FIFO is the best one. Mm -hmm. um, how, how often do you believe we have to go and buy vegetables, for example, for this kind of restaurant? Mm -hmm. Ex excuse me, teacher, repeat the, 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 the question. Yes. How often do you believe uh, people have to buy vegetables for a restaurant? Mm -hmm. It's each day for me is uh, if you wanna you wanna uh, sell uh, fresh food. Yes. Uh, but if you don't use fresh food, uh, it's no more one week. And when you use the freezer uh, for the for fresh for fresh, sorry, the vegetable. And mm. because it's uh, life of that product is very short, and no, if you help, you don't use uh, the freezer. And most, the most possible is that uh, no good for the second day. Okay. Yes, uh, I think you for a restaurant. Uh, the best uh, the purchase is daily for offer the customer the fresh food like uh, Roberto Carlos say is, uh, is the best uh, uh, food uh, to offer the, and prepare the best food okay. so yes same day uh should be the best option. Probably the problem there is that uh, it takes a lot of time, right? So you have to go very early to the market, very early because you need to cook 
as well, right? Teacher, uh, I strongly agree with Roberto and, and Ramiro. And I, I think uh, mo more or less um, two or three times in a week, uh, the owner restaurant uh, buy the vegetable uh, for the, the most fresh vegetable. Very good, perfect. And I have another question for this scenario that is the restaurant. Uh, how do you calculate uh, how much vegetables do you use for something? For example, you are going to cook, I don't know, uh, tomato sauce. How many tomatoes do you believe we need? Or, or how is the calculation there? To know how many tomatoes I'm going to buy today. So what do I do there? It's the pen teacher for me because... Uh, the restaurant um, might might be to know that how many how many plates uh, need uh, uh, to serve in in tonight, for example, uh, because for for this reason. The, the restaurant knows um, how many how many tomatoes that need in the in the in the sauce. Okay, very interesting, very nice. Thank you. Any other I, idea? I think uh depend the 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 menu. Uh, depend the 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 quantity for for order uh for product is as he estimate a the quantity uh purchase the tomatoes yeah uh, and depend the 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 quantity the sales for days or for weekend very good so yes so you need to calculate, yeah, you should, for example, cook the sauce and check how many tomatoes you need for a liter, for example, a liter of sauce. And then another problem here is that we need to calculate how much sauce am I going to put into the food, right? So that's why when you do that one, you are selling food, you need to calculate uh, those little portions. So if I'm going to put into the dish, if I'm going to put two spoons full, for example, so I can calculate all those things, right? In the case of the hero of Quilta, is uh, the most popular, the pupusas. Is, uh, for example, this is depending on the size of the, uh, of the pupuseria. Because some the pupuserias uh, purchase the a box, the full of tomato, and chopping uh, or purchase a, a maybe ten or more a cabbage uh, for the curtido in the stouts. Uh, but some pupuserias uh, prepared only. Uh, one box with uh, 25 tomatoes, for example, and two cabbage for a week, for three days, uh, something. Yeah. For example, here in the house, uh, sometimes my wife made pupusas for, for round, and I made the sauce for the pupusas, and I use no more of a or 10 tomatoes and onions, a little piece of onions in another uh, hair box. But it's for uh, six or seven people, uh, persons. Um, is I calculate the, the, the use of the, of the vegetable, not this 
not expensive, not this, not this much, much, uh, but is depending on the, the market or depending your customers and the, the quantity of the your customers and anything. Okay, so it definitely depends on many, many things. Uh, I believe that restaurants is one of the most complex business that we can run because of many reasons. Teacher, I have I have the the other idea in the same line with Roberto mentioned. Uh, I think that in in a in a weekend, the popuserias need more tomatoes. Uh, for this reason, uh, in the weekend, uh, the popuserias buy more tomatoes uh, than the the normal days. Uh, in a holiday. Uh, the pupuserias need more pupuserias than the the other days or the other normal days, teacher. That is very true. Depending, of course, on the pipes, uh, the spikes of the restaurant, let's say, uh, then they have to be ready for that situation to cover uh, different days because the demand is totally different. And uh, uh, yes, I mean, Another thing that is very difficult in this kind of situation is, for example, when the price of the uh, supplies change. For example, in mind that tomatoes sometimes they are very expensive. And sometimes tomatoes are not very expensive. The problem is that the price of the pupusas are the same. They can change price uh, for one week and then for another week. So at the end, uh, this is going to cause uh, the restaurant to lose some money and expect and just hope that at the end the uh, the prices are stable and not fluctuating that much. And another question I have for the restaurant part, what do you think they do with the food that they cannot sell? Because you cannot lose that money, right? So imagine that there is, I don't know, some pieces of food that they didn't sell that day. What do they do? For me, the, the first the first um, step is if I have a, a restaurant or a local restaurant uh, before, I, I need to, to do the assessment uh, for uh, what kind food the people need, what is my target, and what is the, 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 the art uh, for the people that uh, day uh, for the breakfast, for the lunch, for the dinner. Uh, in in this information for me is is very very important uh, because for this reason, for 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 this information, I feel I feel a little safe. Very good. So definitely you need to calculate those right. So in my home thinking and planning everything is very important and this is not only not only about inventory I mean in mind to run all the business to be friendly the, with the customer and many other things right the teacher the, the risk calculate yeah it's a risk for example one thing that people consider is uh, when there is payment day right a lot of people they go out to eat food on payment day on the 15th on the 30th uh, some restaurants are very crowded, right? So they know that one and they need to calculate that. Okay, but in mind that in mind that happens, in mind that you cooked, I don't know, uh a hundred beef steaks and you sell only 60. So you have 40 beef steaks. What do you do with that meat? What do you do with that food? Speaking about this kind of business, uh, 
but if, in this case, teacher, uh, in decrease the the cells. Uh, the first, the first step for me is the advertising uh, is very important or oh, from the promotions uh, for the people visit in my 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 restaurant for example two for one or oh, the <clears throat> so Yes, it's, it's complex, right? It's kind of complex because uh, you can calculate, but at the end, uh, sometimes things like that happen. Uh, what happens also in this kind of in this kind of companies is that they recycle recycle some food, right? So, for example, if they cooked chicken today, and and they have still chicken at the end of the day. Tomorrow they do enchiladas of chicken rice, so they reuse that kind of food. Uh, that is a solution that some restaurants do, but it's not always working. So at the end, I don't know. Uh, that is a question that I do myself. What do they do with that food that they cannot sell because they are food? Uh, there are many situations where people are not buying, so it's a risk. Is a big risk, and uh, speaking about the point of view of the inventory is something that we really need to calculate, right? A percentage of that risk that you are not going to sell. That problem is more recurrently with the, with the popular restaurant because all is prepared uh, for the lunch, and in a restaurant. Uh, for example, Claudio Canela and others uh, is prepared your order and they prepare uh, your order in the moment. If the meat is is uh, in the press or is in uh, is in a deposit report, but no, is all prepared is uh, <clears throat> for uh, for in the case is the uh, uh, for that type of restaurant, but the popular restaurant is uh, complicated. But the recycle is uh, a good option. Yeah, I believe that that is what people try to do. So they think we can reuse this for tomorrow. And of course, only one day, right? It's not possible to reuse that for three, four, five days. That's not going to be healthy at all. In some cases, it's possible. Yeah, maybe, maybe some people. Yeah. <laughs> maybe some people no, no, interesting that if <laughs> is if it's good the the food or is uh, or is danger for your health. That is true. Restaurants is very difficult because of that you don't know what's happening there in the kitchen, right? So many things can happen. And we just trust, right, in what's going on. Very good, nice analysis. So uh, let's finish the class. And uh, before we finish, do you have any questions for the class of tonight? Okay. Good. So let's check the attendance and then let's go to bed. So Aida Isabel Lopez Bonisha. Chair, teacher. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodriguez. Listen. Good. Yeah. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Greeting from Chiquimula, Guatemala, teacher. Of course. <laughs> hey, very good. <laughs> very good. The, the Guatemala food is, is very good. Yeah, it's it's true. It, 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 for your for your dinner is black beans. Fried. 
Very good. Very good. It's very good. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Can eat, you can eat too. Um, adobo. Oh, that is good. Adobo. And what is good. I okay, really like that. One. I note. Yeah, yeah, that is a very good. I really like that one. And go out to take a drink of Tisha. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. Jose Alfredo Hueso Lopez. Present, teacher, present. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. Maria Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Monica Wendy Avalos Girón. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Here. Good. Sandra Janira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. I'm here, teacher. Perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See good you night. tomorrow. Dream in English. Thank See you girl. tomorrow, teacher, and Thank everyone. You. See you. Thank you. Return, Ernesto. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Roberto, and everyone. Don't, don't forget the gallos. Yeah. Please. <laughs> One more beer. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. So do you. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello.